This is our month of faith steps. And in this church, by God's grace, every month we trust God to be able to hear a message on faith because the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter the just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says the just shall live by faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 says the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 says the just shall live by faith. And so God can help you if your faith is gone out. God requires faith from us to be able to help us because the just shall live by faith. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. So our, the Christian walk is a walk of faith. Shall we all say that together? Oh, can I hear you say it louder, please? For the last time, louder. So the Christian walk is a walk of faith. Without faith, you will be struggling in your Christian walk. You, you'll be a struggling Christian without faith. It is not faith, it doesn't first start with head knowledge. Christianity starts with faith in the heart which now makes the information coming to the mind receivable, understandable. The inf- when you have faith in your heart, the information that, let me use the word information for the lack of better word, the information that comes to you or that comes to your mind becomes illumination, becomes enlightenment. So in the absence of faith, enlightenment from God doesn't happen. Why? The just shall live by faith. Your testimony is a function of faith. Your miracle is a function of faith. Your breakthrough is a function of faith. So when your faith comes under attack, it's almost like a spiritual heart attack. Because you can't live without your heart. In the same way, the just only lives by faith. So the just cannot live. The just will die without faith. Why? Because the just shall live by faith. So when your faith comes under attack, it means that your spiritual heart is under attack. So every Sunday, it's a, every month, it's good to have some uh, spiritual cardiac exercise. Yeah. To, to help, to you know, do a f- faith inventory, that your faith is okay. It's, 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 it's like health check. We can be teaching and teaching and teaching. If your faith is low, we are teaching and it's, it's going waste. So every now, that's why cars do servicing. Every now and then make sure the car is in good servicing and then the car will keep going. Keep going. So I'm just trying to help you come up in your faith. I'm just trying to help you stay, watch this, I like that one, thank you Holy Spirit. I'm trying to help someone stay in spiritual shape. You gotta come, come to stay in shape, be in shape. Once you are in shape, you'll be fine. Praise God. So, it says the just shall live by faith. Now, for, according to 2 Timothy chapter, um, sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12, he said, fight the good fight of faith. All right, so Paul told Timothy, let's, let's just read the first sentence there. Let's go. Oh, come on, are you, are, you, are you preaching with me? Let's go, come on, let's go. Louder, please. All right. So Paul told Timothy, fight it. It's a good fight, but it's a fight of faith. And it's not a fight for your human rights, but it's, it's a fight for your faith. It's not fight for your rights. It's fight for your faith. Because spiritually, you don't have rights. In the realm of, Satan will hit you. He doesn't care about your human rights. He doesn't care about how things are, but he doesn't care about it. Your, the enemies 
behind your problem will never relent because you have discovered a human right or no no it's your right in Christ and your rights in Christ can only be executed when your faith is in place so your spiritual rights gets executed based on your faith I believe this is what God that lady I like that lady's testimony she said when Pastor prophesied and he said somebody with a chest challenge or heart. She says, Yes, this is mine. So her faith, because healing is her right. But until your faith is triggered into place, what is your right spiritually cannot become your actuality. Faith is what makes what Christ has attained for us, it makes it a reality by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, we have to fight it. You have to learn to fight. Do you know there are people, in fact, sometimes when um, there's a news item about someone who was maybe attacked or stabbed or something, they said he's fighting for his life. Life is a fight. You have to fight to live. In the same way, you have to fight for your faith. Fight. Don't let your faith go down. And I watch. It's going down. No, don't be tired. Fight. So I'm going to teach you how to fight for your faith. Fight for your faith. Because faith is not just a feeling. So for you to have a mood and feeling that, okay, I'm going to try it. No, 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 no. There are certain factors that must be in place for, your, for you to be able to fight the fight of faith. Yeah. Do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Everybody say, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Say it again, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. In Jude 3, verse so Jude verse 3 it says that contending for the faith beloved while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common faith our common salvation sorry I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to the saints contend you have to fight All right. so believers are enjoined to fight not to fight people but fight. Those of us who are good with fighting, use it to fight your faith, for your faith. Use it. If you have that, that tendency, you know some people have tendency of, you don't cross them, they'll fight you. Use it for your faith. Use it for your faith. Use it to secure your child. Use it to secure your marriage. Use it to secure your health. You may, you may hear something negative about your health and you say, no, I'm not taking this. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm enforcing. How do you fight for your faith? Number one, I said it, and that fear not. Someone scream, fear not. Fear. Louder, fear not. Fear not. In Mark chapter 5, verse 36, Jesus told Jairus, Jesus when Jesus, said, when Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus by name, do not be afraid, only believe. King James says, fear not, only believe. There are 365 fear nots in the Bible. So everywhere in the Bible, 365, one for every day. One for every day, because every day comes with a different challenge. Some of you are not aware. So, as you are nursing yesterday's wounds, it will distract you from preparing for tomorrow's issues. For every day. Bible, Jesus actually puts it this way. He said, sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. He said, there's enough evil in a day for you to be adding to it by worrying. Matthew chapter, I think, 12 or so. Uh, you know, Matthew chapter 6, rather. Luke chapter 12. 30, that was Matthew chapter 6, 30 somewhere. Jesus said that for, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil. That there is enough evil in a day that you don't have to add to it by worrying about tomorrow. Today's problems are enough. So if you worry about tomorrow today, you are adding to the stress of today. And he said the stress, the stress 
the challenges of today is sufficient. It's enough. So if you don't worry about tomorrow, you can live longer. Why? Because you are taking a day at a time. And you have enough strength to handle today's problem. If you begin to fight tomorrow's problem today, worry by worrying about tomorrow today, now you have increased today's problem, which will now make you incapable of dealing with it and it will carry over to tomorrow. And now you have brought future and past into today. That's what, well, that's what cast people's life short. So Jesus said, sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. <laughs> The evil in a day is enough for you. You can handle it. <laughs> Look on your way to church. Maybe you have to dodge traffic or, or you have to jump on this bus. Some of my bus driver drove and left you and all that. It's sufficient for the day. All right. That alone is so much. Why are you worried about next month? What's going to happen? So fear not. Most of the time, fear is always about the unknown. It's about what is coming, what is ahead. Fear not. Fear not. Jesus said, so instead of fearing what you do, believe. So you want to fight the fight of faith, choose that I will not be afraid. The psalmist said in Psalm 56 verse, uh, verse 3, he said, whenever I am afraid or what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. How many of you have, have feared before? <laughs> Sometimes your bosses call you to come for a meeting and they have, they have laid off a few of your folks and then they said, next week we have a meeting with you. You go fearing. You go fearing. Some of us don't open certain type of letters. Not because of smartness, but because of fear. You won't open the letter. Fear not. Okay, so the Bible says that fear not, just believe. So this is how to fight the good fight of faith. Don't be afraid, keep believing. Just believe. Because fear will not add to you. Believing will not take from you. So instead of fearing, fear will take from you. Believing can add to you. So instead of fearing which is taken from you, why don't you believe which will not take anything from you? And the best is it will rather add to you. Fear never adds to you. Fear never adds to you. You can ruin your relationship because you, you were always afraid your man was going to teach it on you. Yeah, that's true. So you ended up making him even, you sow the, the thoughts into his head. Yeah. He's maybe not like that, but your former, your ex was like that. And now your ex has given you a well view of men. Mm. That is not helpful, healthy for your current relationship. Mm. You, you are always afraid something will happen. Always afraid. Job said, what I feared has happened to me. You are always afraid. Somebody puts it this way, said, fear is F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. So it's false. Don't be afraid. Most of the things we are afraid of never happen. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Never. Remember, just, I'm just trying to, even when you were not a believer, you remember a while ago, some things that you thought you had lost your job, or you've lost your house, or you've your husband was going to divorce you or your wife was going to divorce because of the thing that came up. You knew that my marriage is over. You knew that this relationship will not happen mm. because this information has popped up. <coughs> you were so worried, you lost sleep. Mm. Mm. You remember when you were fighting that visa battle? Mm. 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 You knew that it was, it's, you've lost it. And you were so much afraid, and you said, please, please, please. And actually, you were worrying unnecessarily. When they called you for a meeting, you thought they were going to sack you, not knowing they were going to give you other office. Yeah. May that be your testimony. Anybody who has been called for meeting by your employers, I pray may it turn into an, a promotion for you. So 
He said, whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Fear not. I like the way Psalm 118 verse 6 says. It says that, uh, <laughs> the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? You, you must develop that, that attitude of confidence in God. I'm not afraid. Mm. Yeah. I'm not afraid. I, what can man do to me? Mm. What can man do to me? What can man do to me? At, at, at worst, they'll say, okay, we are taking your job. They can't kill you. Mm. Mm. I know of a gentleman who had a serious crisis. Serious crisis. The police raided his house. and so It was, it was looking so bad. The wife was down mm. years ago. And then he told the wife. He, he was, the guy was telling me later. I said, I told the wife, you know what? Worst case scenario, they'll, put, they'll, they'll tell me to go to prison. They won't kill me. Yeah. And so he started reading a lot of information, people who have been to prison and back, what they do. Yeah. He, he said, he was preparing, the, uh, it, they will not kill me. If I will be killed, that's different. And he said, in, in the West, people don't get killed. In UK, we don't kill people. So it doesn't matter the West. Yeah. Somebody have done. There's no, death. There's no death penalty. So I'll come out. And sometimes the people who do drugs, they, will, they can make money of some millions, and they say, oh, I'm going 10 years, I'll come back. When I come, I'm coming to now spend my 10 years. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Tell someone, fear not. Trust God. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, it says that, so we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Psalm 56, verse 11. Verse 11, 56, verse 11. In God I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do to me. Look at verse 4. Verse 4. In God, I, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Don't fear, okay? Don't fear. Especially when people threaten you. Don't fear. Just put your trust in God. That, can you imagine you, are, you work somewhere and this particular person has determined that you will make sure you lose this job. Don't fear if God is behind you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't fear. They will go and you'll still be there. And all their cohorts or accomplices or their supporters, they will all go and you'll still be there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 27 verse 1, he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? You see that? Let's all read it. I think this is a good confession to me. Let's read it. Let's go. I need you to read it with confidence, okay? I'm just trying to train you to let the word of God come out of your mouth, enter your heart and release it from it. That's how God works to help us, right? So read it out loud again. Let's go. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my heart. Of whom shall I be afraid? Don't be afraid. Trust God. Bible says that Psalm 20 verse 7, some trust in chariots, others trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Trust God and fear not. Number two, create and maintain a word-filled atmosphere. Create and maintain a word-filled atmosphere. What's a word-filled atmosphere? An atmosphere where, you know, the word of God, things that are bringing the word of God to you. So like church, like at home playing, preaching message in your car, some of the, the songs we listen to, it must be bringing the word to you. It must be bringing the word. The, this song, for instance, is such a nice song. A lot of the songs are nice, but... Um, uh, Savior, he can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. It's, it's telling you about what God can do. Yeah. You know, a word filled. That's why if you want to enjoy music, why don't you enjoy and build? Mm. So listen to music, that will be building you. Yeah. That will be, it's like building your heart, spiritual heart. So you can, you'll be able to take on whatever the enemy brings you. Sometimes your faith is so weak because your faith has been starved. 
You haven't created an atmosphere that, you know, when you are in a certain atmosphere, naturally, your faith does better. How many of you know what I'm talking about? There are some atmospheres you go in, you can realize that you feel lifted. You feel uplifted. You feel, well, I can handle the week. I can, I can, I can handle the issue ahead. You know, so when you create or allow a word-filled atmosphere, faith feeds on the word. Actually, Bible puts it, faith comes by hearing. So what you hear matters. What would you hear will determine the quality of your faith. Amen. Be, Jesus told them, be careful what you hear. What you hear will set the pace for your faith. It will determine the quality of your faith. So it is necessary to create an atmosphere where the word of God keeps coming in. If you are believing God for a miracle, create a word-filled atmosphere. Praise God. It's necessary. How do you create a word-filled atmosphere? Generate it. When you are not in church, create a, a kind of church atmosphere around you. In your car, especially those of us who have cars that can play music or... Create it. And nowadays, because of smartphones and stuff like that, earphones. Yeah. Almost, I mean, pr- practically all phones, I'm, I, I, I guess so, I might be wrong, many phones come with earphones. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes, just plug it, use it when you're in town. Listen to message, listen to, you're on the train, you're reading, then be listening to some spiritually uplifting songs. Don't waste your ears. Always take advantage of the environment. And get something going in. Get something going in. Create the atmosphere. You can be in the, in the, in the, in, at the pub. Mm. At the pub, having a meeting with maybe your boss. And yet, you have a, a wet atmosphere. Whilst you're waiting for him, you're creating a wet atmosphere. So wet atmosphere, you can generate it by yourself. A wet-filled atmosphere. And by God's grace, because of technology and smartphones, you can download all the messages. Get them on your system. They listen because faith comes by hearing. You see, you have to take conscious steps to fight the good fight. So when you are doing that, someone may think that, why are you always playing this kind of music? Let the person know. Some of them, you don't have to answer them, but you have to know that you are, you are fighting the good fight of faith. I'm showing you how to fight. You don't wait till crisis. The doctor says, we have to chop your leg. Say, God forbid. We have it. And then you say, no, I believe. It is a bit too late. Don't wait for crisis to come before because faith is not a spare tie mm. to use in time of crisis. Faith is a lifestyle, not a spare tie. Oh. Amen. Don't wait for crisis. Then, oh, oh, faith, oh, I need faith, I need faith. <laughs> it will be too late. Mm. When, when doctors tell somebody that this is a crisis and we, you, we have to do something about it, and you may, you may live with a certain condition for the rest of your life. Listen. What you don't want is some terrible illnesses. God forbid, a doctor tells you that you've got cancer. No, listen, say God forbid. forbid. If you don't, if you know you hear something like that, say God forbid. forbid. And it will be according to your confession in Jesus' name. But not even anyone who didn't say it, it will happen because you catch good things, even if it is in your blood, it's it's about to happen. The fact that you are in this atmosphere, I kill that thing in the name of Jesus. But the doctors tell you something negative. The problem is because, okay, like you are pregnant, and they tell you that uh, the, the, the pregnancy is a waste. It's, God forbid. Something. You know, now, hmm, you now need to find how you can encourage yourself because they have told you something negative already, and you know it, and it's hard to think otherwise. Mm. You know? So the battle is intense. Mm. Years ago, my pastor said this in church, years ago, he said, they told you, when you started feeling the pain, the doctors told you, we suspect this, come and let's check. And then you went, they checked it. And they told you, no, this, this thing is looking serious. And you kept it very private. 
In spite of the crisis in your hands, you kept it private. And then it kept going on. And then they said, now the thing gets to a level where it's now out of our, it become the, is, is the, then you come to us, can you please pray with me? It's too late now. We may pray, but it's, it's a bit, very late. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Tackle something. Tackle something. Don't hide things. Some of us are so, imp- uh, images, your image is so important than your safety. <laughs> so you borrow a shoe to go to prison. <laughs> because you won't. <laughs> your, your image is so important to you. You want it to you want you want to look like your marriage is working. Mm-hmm. So instead of crying out for help, <clears throat> your family is in crisis. Your son is messing up. <clears throat> instead of crying out for help, you want to look like me, I've got everything okay. You don't have money. And they're about to repossess your house. Instead of crying out, please, do you know where I can get a job? I said, I know, I heard about your, your testimony that you are not a recruiter. Is there a possibility? You won't ask. You know me, me, no, God will provide for my job, you know. <laughs> don't die quietly. Even if you die, die screaming and kicking. Yes. Why I'm dying. No, don't go down quietly. <laughs> <laughs> there's an African proverb which I'm trying to paraphrase it there's an African proverb which says that if you sell your sickness you get medication for it I hope you understand what it's like but if you keep your sickness private people who have even medicinal help remedies we didn't even know you have that sickness they won't, they won't say, oh, this is... But if everybody knows that this or you, you... People can... Can I help? Oh, I know this person. He knows. He treats this. I know they're special. He treats this kind of... I know. You understand what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah. I'm not uh, supposing that I go around telling people your sickness. But what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you must be able to speak out yeah. to places where you can receive help. Mm. Because we will get to know eventually. Mm. Yeah. We'll get to know. Or we'll get to see the pregnancy eventually. You can't hide it. We'll get to know. There's, I told some people sometimes there's nothing like a private divorce. People will get to know that you are divorced. So why don't you seek help from people who can help you? And then between you and them, it's kept and it may, your marriage will survive. No one knew that you were almost divorced. Or you are keeping yourself like, hello, in public. But you're, you're on the road to divorce. That will not be your testimony. So create a well-filled atmosphere. Number three, focus on what you are expecting. Focus on, that's how to fight your, the fight of faith. Are you expecting God to do something for you? What are you expecting? Keep your mind on that. Focus on what you're expecting. Focus on it. Because you will see things that will make you feel like it will never happen. But focus on it. Focus on it. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says that, um, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. What are we supposed to be looking at? What are we so, not supposed to be looking at? So current things you, things you are seeing, experiencing, don't focus on those things. Luke is not just talking about just physical, your, with your eyes. It's talking about you focus on. Put it back, please. So whilst we look not on the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are passing away. Your situation, that negative situation is passing away. Would you believe that before the end of this year, yeah. there are people here who are not in relationships but will be married by the end of the year? Yeah. They, they are not in relationship as I speak. They don't even know, it. there's nobody on the horizon. But before the end of the year, they, you will be married. Shout amen. amen. 
So focus on what is. Bible talks about Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. By faith we understand that the, word, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that, I like the so that bit. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So if you are only basing your future on the things that are seen, you miss major potentials from God, potential opportunities from God, because things that are not seen, uh, things that you can ex- are not, were not made but uh, generated by things that appear. So ignore just what you are seeing and begin to focus on the supernatural realities by God's word. Does that make sense? There is a higher reality. There is a greater reality that you you haven't tapped into yet. So why am I teaching you the word? I'm teaching you God's word so you can see your future or pictures of your future in the scriptures. Once you can see it, you can now begin to go in the future focusing on it. I think in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14, God told Abraham, lift up your eyes. And the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord had uh, separated from him, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where uh, thou art, northwards, southwards, eastwards, and westwards. Look at the next verse, verse 15. For, For all the land which you see, to you will I give it and to your seed for so what you are going to possess is a function of what you are going you see God said the land that you see lift your eyes brother sister lift your eyes you are always looking just around you there are untapped potentials ahead of you he said lift up your eyes tell someone lift up your eyes lift up Look, look beyond where you are Look, I know that things are financially very tough, but come on, look, look beyond where you are. Things are maritally not the best. Look beyond where you are. Things health, health-wise are not the best. Career-wise are not the best. Look beyond where you are. People who don't even have God, things change. So you who have God, things cannot they remain the same. Look beyond where you are. So don't make your, don't start making your will now based on just the situation you're in. Look beyond, make your will if you have to, based on what is ahead. Plan with the future in mind. Look ahead. So God told him, look ahead. And what, he said, what you see, north, south, east, west, that's what I will give to you. So I'm waiting for you to tell me what you have seen, then I'll give it to you. Hey, God, Bible said, Jeremiah, he asked him, what seest thou? He said, I see an almond tree. God asked him first, Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 10, he said, what, what seest thou? What are you seeing? And then he said, I see an almond tree. I see this. And then God told him that you have seen well. Verse 12, for I watch over my word to perform. He said, thou hast seen well. Thou hast well seen. So some scenes are necessary. God requires you to see. What you have seen in your future cannot be robbed of you. You remember, those of you who have been around, I always made reference to this. When, before my wife, my wife got pregnant, over five years into marriage without pregnancy, I told the church, I have seen, I've seen myself in the labor world carrying the baby. I saw it. I saw it. What you have seen, you will, Jesus says that, uh, he says, blessed are they who have not seen, but believe. Now watch this, but believe. And then Thomas came, Thomas who doubts so much, when he saw Jesus, he couldn't doubt. You can't doubt what you have seen. You, you can't say, oh, pastor, who was not in church today, if you were in church. You saw her. No one can convince you against that. What am I holding? How can someone convince you that, oh, pastor was holding an iPad? Why? Because you, are, you can see it. You know that this is, this is, this is not African print. So someone can tell you that he's always wearing. No, it's not African print. So what I'm trying to say, when you see it, it is, it is absurd to not to believe. Because when you see it, it says, believing is natural. So you have to see it with the eye of the spirit. See it ahead. Romans 12, 12. What does it say? Rejoicing in hope. Let's all say that together. 
One more time. One more time. Rejoicing in hope. You know it's coming. Wow. You know it's coming. Rejoice in hope that this thing is going to happen. So take your eyes off what you are. Bible says Abraham did the same thing. Romans chapter 4 from verse 19. He did not consider. Abraham being not weak in faith, considered not his own body which was now dead. An old, an old man who was supposed to get his wife pregnant, he was dead already. His body, his body was dead. But Abraham said, because God said, I'm going to have a child, I'm not considering my body. Sarah, let's go. Sarah said, Abraham, how? So don't worry, let's, let's go. But Sarah said, okay, anyway, maybe you, you want to, you, you find, but me, my womb is dead. Don't worry, let's go. He did not consider his body which was dead, neither did he consider the deadness of his wife's womb. But he concluded that we are going to have a child at the age of, why? You see, what you are considering will defeat your faith or empower your faith. Be careful what you are considering because faith is not just a positive thinking, mental projection. Faith is more complex than that. Faith is a spiritual, it's a state in your spirit. Let me show you one more scripture. You will like this scripture, very powerful. Second Kings chapter 6. I like this. Is somebody learning something? Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 14. Therefore, he sent horses, that's the king sent horses, verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, master, what shall we do? So the, the guy woke up early in the morning. Who? His servant. His servant. The man of God's servant woke up early in the morning. It wasn't the man of God who had to go and do that. A servant. <laughs> so some of us go to work later than our bosses. And you don't understand why they are not promoting. You are making it a racial issue or gender issue. No. It's an attitudinal issue. Yeah. Mm. You be the one to, if it's a shop, be the one to go and open the shop. You don't have the key. You go, you go, you know the other guy who opens it, he lives, so on the way, you call him, let's go. I'm trying to lift our people from a certain state. Because most of our people, where we are, is attitude now. It, the attitude is what's keeping. That's why I felt like I should have been in the army to, to even go and learn some extra hardness. Not for people, for my, but for myself. Extra hardness. Some of us are so soft towards ourselves. When they turn up, they hit a little bit of work, you say, I'm quitting. <laughs> you can't work under pressure. You can't work under pressure. And yet you have this deceptive mindset that you'll be a celebrity. Ah! It's a very, it's, celebrities suffer for their fame. They suffer. Footballers suffer. Pressure. You have been de developed to be allergic to pressure. Wow. Please, let's raise our sons to be able to take pressure. Yes. To take pressure. All right, let's read that scripture and then I've closed my Bible. The servants went to fetch water and then he saw the soldiers. So the servant of man came and he said, Alas, master, what shall we do? Because soldiers, trained soldiers, chariots surrounded the city and coming for the man of God. And so he, he was very worried and afraid. And... Um, Verse 16. So the man of God answered, Do not fear. Tell somebody, do not fear. Say it again, please. Do Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> that is your word. That is your word. <laughs> that is your word. Why should, not, why should you not be afraid? <laughs> and you know what the, the, uh, the servant said? Say, what? What? No, you can't be saying that. You can't be saying that. I'm very intelligent, man. He, he was going to fetch water. He came. <laughs> master, 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 prophet, what is it? Daddy, prophet, master, daddy, prophet, master, what is, what is it? Calm down, calm down. I'm sure they gave him some, um, something to drink to calm him down. What is it? He said, we are dead. Alas, what shall we do? Soldiers, they are coming after us. Sounded. And then the master said, 
fear not. Those who are with us are more than those. I don't think I think you should come out. Come and see. <laughs> Maybe you, are, you have underestimated what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so he pulled his come, 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 said. He took him. Pastor. And the master, master said, Don't worry. Sir, my son, calm down. And he realized the guy will not calm down. So he said, I think you need a change in fo- change of focus. Ah. You have to change your lens. Ah. So you can see what I see. Oh. So what happened? Let's read. Verse 17. And in our Lord, I pray. Open his eyes that he may see. One more time. Lord, I pray. Open his eyes that he may see. What was the prayer? Open his eyes that he may see. See what? He saw the soldiers already. He is not blind. He also praying that open. What kind of prayer is this? <laughs> Wow. Because there is another unseen reality. Oh, wow. Amen. Oh, come on. You will not be sick. Amen. 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 Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Come on. You're only looking at only one side, the human side. There's a, another unseen reality. It's a reality, but you don't know. He said, open your eyes. Then the Lord opened the eye of the young man. And he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. Amen. Oh. They are, when did they come? When they opened their eyes? No. no. They've always been there, but he never knew. Yeah. Never knew. He never knew. Yeah. Rise to your feet, sir. No, you sit down. You, please rise to your feet. How long have you been married? For six and a half years. Six and a half years. Wow. How long have you known your wife? Are you trying to say your wife is six and, one, six, six and a half years old? <laughs> how old is she? Sorry, how long have you known her? For about seven years. Seven years. And is she over 20 years? Hey, yes. Your wife is over 20 years? Over 30 years. Over 30 years? Ah, so and you've known her for only seven years. So before you knew her, she was existing? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. So she was, you see, his wife, at the seven, eight years ago, his wife was alive. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know. He didn't have a clue that there was going to be a Gina in my life. But Gina was born long time ago. Gina was born over 20 years before he met Gina. What makes you think that your reality is already not there? Are you getting it's, it's, it is not that now do believe it and God will go and manifest. It is already there. The reality of your testimony is already waiting for you. It's already waiting. It's just what you are seeing. What you are seeing is now the problem. What you are, you are so, you have become so erratic. You are so stressed because of what you are seeing. What you are focusing on. What, what you are watching, what you are considering, what you are looking, he said, whilst we look not at the things that are seen, but you are looking at the things that are seen, you are looking at the things you can perceive with your natural senses. That is what is determining your decisions. But hey, there is a higher reality. There is a higher reality. Am I talking to some? Listen, this year, it doesn't matter what you don't, you have not seen yet. This year will end with you smiling more than you ever thought. Yes. Somebody is coming out of trouble. Somebody is coming out of trouble. Somebody is coming out of crisis. In the name of Jesus. There is a higher reality. Something, a testimony is waiting for you. Amen. You are, you are at a certain state when it looks like it's not possible. <laughs> but a testimony is waiting for you. So take your eyes off the complications. 
Take your eyes off the complications, the impossibilities, and start seeing the possibility. He said, as far as you can see, I'll give it to you. Ah. Start seeing, start seeing, focusing on where you are going, focusing on what God is doing, focus on that. Start seeing your colorful future. Start seeing your wonderful marriage. Start seeing your healthy babies. Start seeing, no, I, I had a testimony this morning. A, a man and a woman, they've been married for many years in a, a, a Papa's church. Ah. They've been married for many years. They've tried and no child. And doctors have given up on them. No child. And one day came to church and Papa said, anyone believing God for a child, you receive double. We receive double. He said, hey, this is my word. And you receive, he said, I receive double. I receive double. He, he tapped into it. An elderly man, not a young man. He tapped into it. And he kept t- talking about it. Everywhere he goes, he was telling people, oh, double is coming. Double is coming. Because Papa said, not only one. Double. I'm, I'm expecting double. I'm expecting double. And people started mocking him. My friend, mm. yeah, oh, did you just start thinking about double. She said, I'm expecting double. I'm expecting double. I'm expecting double. It will happen for me. Double. He kept saying it. And then, guess what? The wife, and he kept coming to church, releasing. He didn't change his confession. And the wife got pregnant. Wow. When she got pregnant, guess what? Twins. Twins. Watch this. That is not that beautiful testimony for me. And after that, the, she conceived again. And the guy said, Papa said double, so it's not just the only one. She must give another, it was double twins, so she must give birth to another double twins. And she conceived again, and guess what? Had twins. Hey. And this morning, they had returned to come and give glory to God. And they were carrying the two, first one, two boys, and the other one is a boy and a girl. First one, Isaac and David, and the second one is uh, Victor and Victoria. It is your turn! I said it is your turn! The word will work for you! The word will work for you! I release the supernatural reality into your life! In the name of Jesus! I stand here as a prophet of God! I stand here as a servant of God! I stand here as a messenger of God! And I prophesy over your life! It is working for you! Your story is changing! Your story is changing! Your story is changing. Your story is changing. In the name of Jesus.